I'll be a hero. All right, everybody, so if it wasn't completely obvious from that introduction, today we're going to be doing a character generation based on Todoroki, except we're only going to be focusing on his fire side. Now, this was something that was requested by a, uh, someone from Facebook that uh, they've been working on this character and they just, they're not sure what to do because they're new to the point-based system. And this video is going to be going through building this character now i'm going to be building it like i built the last character with starting with the basic heroes handbook and then jumping into the uh deluxe heroes handbook i have a general idea of what i want it to look like but i haven't completely built it myself so there might be a little bit of uh, hiccups here and there now um since my last build video was designed to go into what I think about as far as character generation and character building, I want all of my character building videos now to be digging into some aspect of character building, okay? Character generation, uh, or some people call it care gen. Um, the big thing that I'm digging into right now with this video is going to be arrays, um, as well as um, making your character fit whenever they're in a different power level than 10. So, um, I'm going to be building the character at power level 10, then I'm going to be transitioning it down to power level 8, then I'm going to be adding up the points, and then after that we're going to have the added caveat because he told me that his GM is using a different baseline, where instead of 0 being the base stat, where at 0 uh, for each ability score you're spending 0 points, he has negative 1. So that means since it's a high school setting, um, everything is cut down except for one stat that is going to start at one. Uh, so so there, there's one stat where the character's a prodigy, even better than adult heroes uh, off the bat, but the, all the other stats are going to be decreased. Now I'm going to show you a quick way to apply that in order to compensate for that. Now I realize that you're supposed to do that in the beginning of character generation and let that be a thing as part of the character creation, but I personally, feel like that just overcomplicates the entire process, especially for new players. Um, I feel that it is much easier to tackle on that penalty and deal with that penalty later on at the end of the character, and I'm going to show you how I do that in the finale. So, that's, so this is going to be a little bit longer of a video, but I think that we're going to be getting into some really good stuff here. Are you ready? Alright, let's go! Alright, so... This character's name is Electra Moore. Okay. Now, he said that he wanted to focus on the fire side of this. And then I'm going to I'm going to build the character, then I'm going to go back to the information he sent me and see if I can't add in some things from his character sheet now i'm building this as a generic uh i'm starting out as an energy controller because she's going to be controlling fire so i'm starting on page 16 of the basic heroes handbook if you want to follow along Alrighty, so turn on numlock so this goes pretty smoothly Alrighty, zero strength stamina two agility four Dexterity 3, Fight 3, Intellect 0, Awareness 2, and Presence 2. Okay. Uh, she confident, disciplined, or hot headed? We're going to go confident. Yeah, we're going to go confident. So that's going to be uh, two more added to Presence. Bring a Presence up to 4. Now, for defenses, dodge is going to get a plus four, which is also based off of agility, so that's going to be an eight. Parry is going to get three, which is based off of fighting, so that's going to be a six. Fortitude is based off of stamina, and it's going to get a plus five to that, so that's going to be seven. Uh, toughness so far is two, because nothing else is modifying it. And will is getting six, uh, which is also which is based on awareness. So that is going to be 10. Okay. Jeez, if I'd taken the discipline route, that would get a nice little buff. Okay, so let me just record this so I don't forget it. How much we spent on stats. Yeah, four. 
seven, twelve, eighteen. Nope, that's what that's, that's that's there we go. Eighteen, there we go. I'll do with everything else later. Okay. Great. Alright, so now we jump down to skills. Automatically get ranged combat energy blast. Right? Uh, which she's going to get five ranks in that. Yeah, let's capitalize that, shall we? Uh, but we're going to say this is fire blast because she has got some fire to her. Five ranks. And her natural ability with that is going to be, since it's ranged, is going to be dex. So she's going to have three ranks in that. So that brings that to a plus eight to hit. Uh, We're just going to put that up here right now. Don't know how strong it's going to be yet, but I'm just going to start putting that there. And either deception or intimidate. I am going to choose intimidate. Because she is intimidating. And intimidate is going to get seven ranks. Oh, that is insight. No, that's intimidation. Okay. And that is based off of presence, which is already a four. So that's pretty hefty. She could be a bit intimidating. Now we get two areas that she has studied in. Now, from what he has on here, uh, on his character sheet, looks like he gave her ranks in acrobatics athletics close combat and technology so we are going to go with the athletics and yeah we're gonna go with athletics and piloting okay so she's going to get four ranks in acrobatics four ranks in athletics and then acrobatics is based off of agility which is going to be four. I know athletics is based on strength. Yep, which is zero. Ooh. Definitely need those ranks in that. Okay. So she's very, very agile. And then piloting gives her technology for vehicles for. Ooh. Alright, that's, whoops, that's based, that's the wrong button. Uh, that is three, because that is based on dex. And technology is based on intellect, which is as big as zero right now. So far, so good. Now we get, go for the advantages. Alright, so should we pick two areas? Now let's take a look at what advantages he gave her in on his character sheet, he gave her great endurance, jack of all trades, teamwork, luck, and I i don't know what link he's got there, but okay. Alright, so we've got, let's see. Well, the teamwork is going to be cooperative, so we get the infamous setup. Except she actually, I, I will see about giving her something that can actually use setup. Uh, setup. Teamwork. Let's make her a wisecracker. Let's make her. Uh, let's make her fearless. So she's immune. She's immune to fear-based effect. And taunt, where she can taunt the enemy. That could be very useful in combined with setup and all that stuff. Okay. Now we jump into the powers. Alright, so first uh, we're going with uh, we're going with the element uh, elementalist, which because everything about her is based on fire, right? Uh, fire flight which is flight seven. Okay. Energy sense. 
So everywhere it says energy, I'm substituting the word fire because she's all about fire. Accurate. Tickle. So she always knows if there's fire around her. Uh, she can tell what caused it. And she can just sense it. Alright, and... Fire shield, which is... Force field 10. Impervious. Okay, so force field is going to bump up her uh, toughness. Technically to uh, 12. Okay. Alright, so she's, she's, she's pushing the limit right there. Alright. Now, I promised we were going to be delving into arrays, and here's how we do this. So let's go do a quick rundown of what an array is. An array is when you have a power that has multiple different forms, right? Um, or uh, different things that you can only use one at a time for various reasons, right? So how this works is uh, point-wise is you pay for the most expensive power in the array and then all of the other uh, things cannot cost more than the most expensive one but they all only cost one point each because the idea is that you can only use one at a time having a wide variety of things you can do kind of has diminishing returns at that point. Uh, so, in this case, we're going to be dealing with um, her her fire blasts and the things she can do with her fire. And uh, when we come to the points, this is all going to be costing one point, right? So right now, I'm actually going to put a lot uh, space here so we can differentiate. We have fire control, right? All right, so let's get this started. So, fire blasts. Ooh, ooh, that's 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 actually glorious. <laughs> so, indirect is a thing that says the thing does not have to come from you. Um, in the process of stripping this down, this is probably getting nerfed off of this character, but it's a glorious thing. Indirect one is that it can come from another point facing, um, uh, facing like forward for you. So like if you're facing here and you still have it to start at that other point, that's also going to be facing there. Uh, indirect two is that like it can be, uh... A second point like it, it just off the double actually let me double check what indirect does because that's actually really really important to know about the power and whether it's going to be worth trying to keep uh, indirect on here okay so indirect three means it comes from any point but it's always going a certain direction so this could be calling so we're just gonna say this is calling fire up uh, this is going to be her uh, just she chooses a point where the blast starts from and it just comes straight up so that way you can get around concealment or uh or cover all right so we've got fire blasts then we've got fire bomb which is burst eight which that's actually hilarious she just picks a point and then huge, th oh, I think it's a 30 foot circle of fire that people have to dodge. Now this one is going to be interesting to work with here. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15. Okay. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have fun counting this up. Making things out of fire. Eight. Okay. And just like that, character's done. 
All right, so we've got twelve, so that's DC twenty seven. Fire comes up from ground. Her initiative is based on her agility, which is four. All right. It's a burst eight, so it's gonna be eighteen to dodge. Thirty foot circle. Okay. And then boom. So she's got she's got some pretty decent stuff right there, right? And she's got flight. She's got fire sense. All right, and let's just make the notes of the personality things we got. I hope that these are accurate. Confident. Athletic. Piloting. Then I gave her... Okay, so pretty, pretty decent character. Okay, she's got stuff. She can fly. She's uh, pretty much at power level limit. So one of the big things to keep track of whenever you're doing this is uh, making sure that your offense as well as your defense is around power level limit. So uh, eight plus twelve is twenty. So the, her main damaging power is at the power level limits. Uh, her AOE power is just under the power level limit. Um, 12, 8 is 20. 12, 6, 18. So those are just a, like the dodge. The ranged is just is at power level limit. The melee is just under. That's fine. Uh, fortitude and will hit 17. That's a little bit on the low side for her mental stuff. Um, if I took her as being more disciplined instead of confident... Uh, she would have gotten, uh, th this would actually be closer, this would be at 19, but she would lose out on the, on two ranks in, in on, uh, two points of intimidation, so that's kind of like, eh, if she's trying to be intimidating, it's up to you how well you feel about that, but now, now the character's done, right? All right, now the character's done. Now we jump into the next part of this, right? And that is dropping the character down to power level eight. Now, how do you now how do you drop a power level ten character down to power level eight? The simplest answer is you uh, go through and for each level you're dropping them down, you decrease the on hit and the damage for all of their on hit powers, and you decrease the ranks of their AOE powers for all of the things like the firebomb, and then you decrease their defenses. Uh, you usually will nerf either uh, nerfing the active defenses by one for each, or you will nerf um, uh, the toughness by one for each. It's up to you which way you go about that. So you just need to make sure you're operating within the power level limits, okay? All right, so let's start this process of dropping this down. All right, so. Oh, and also all skills go down by one uh, for each thing. So she goes down to two in that, two in that. Two, ooh, nope, it goes on to five in that. And then. So then this is goes down from five to three. So that brings that to six. All right. And then also all of these powers need to go down as well. So uh, this is going to go down to ten. 
Burst is going to go down to 6. Move Object is going to go down to 10. And Create is going to go down to 6 as well. Alright, so let's see about that. Okay. 21 on that. Uh, this goes down to damage 10. Which is still pretty good damage. Alright, so. Okay. So now we tally up the points and we see what's left to make sure that everything is within the limits. Alright, so let's run down the list and let's start counting up some points. Oh wait, no, I, I still haven't messed with defenses. Whoopsies. Uh, Alright, so we are going to drop the dodge down to six. And the parry down to four. Eighteen. Uh, this is sixteen. Oops, this has to go down as well. Protection power has got to go down as well, so we're cutting the force field down to eight. Might have to cut the, uh, okay, 16, 14, that works. And then these need to go down as well. Um, we are going to cut this down to five. down to 8 so that's 13 we could play with that a little bit more but we'll see about that so 2 4 6 8 this went down so that leaves me down to 10 points and just double check my math real quick uh, agility is 4 that's up by 2 Fighting is three. That's up by one. So that is three so far. Plus three for the fortitude is uh, seven. Oh, hold up. Hold up. How much will was she supposed to have? Double checking numbers. Will was supposed to get six. Oh, wow. I was adding in presence and not awareness. Huh. Neat. Okay. Ah, uh, that's that was over. That's that was over. Okay, so awareness is two. Instead of adding six, I'm adding four. So that is actually six. So she is not the strongest mentally, but she'll do. Okay, so that's four. So let's count this up again. Make sure I'm not goofing around. We've got six from four, so that's two. Perry, that's one's three. Fortitude, that's another three at six. That's four, it's ten. Okay. All right, so. Now then, do my math again. Four, eight, ten, sixteen, four, eight, ten, thirteen, sixteen, eighteen. That actually should be thirty-six. Two, five, nine, twelve, fourteen, four plus four is eight. Yep, okay, thirty-six. Cool. Awesome. Advantages, she has got four. And skills, she has got two, four, two, four, nine. 
16, 20 ranks in skills, which means this is worth 10 points. Okay. And powers. Alrighty, so powers. That is, that should be one per rank. So this should be worth seven. Because uh, I do believe flight is literally just one per rank. I don't like making flying characters because it just gets a little bit frustrating to deal with. Um, just keeping track of where you are in three dimensions. So. Oh, two. Okay. So it's 14. We Okay, so it's 14 for this. This costs four points. So that's 16. That is... Oops. Eight impervious ranks, so that is going to be um, sixteen, right? So so far we're looking at sixteen, twenty, thirty-two in power so far before we even touch the array, right? And now for the array, blast ten. So that is actually. 13. Uh, that is 12. But it's only going to cost 1. Move object. Two points per rank. So that's too strong, actually. So, uh, if it's two points per rank, uh, wait, no, that is not 13. Because that is it. That is arranged. That is ranged. So that is two per rank. So that is actually 23. And bursts already. Create is two points per rank, so this should be twelve, but it's movable. So it's three points per rank, so this is actually 18. I think that's supposed to be ranged and AOE, so that actually ends up being three per rank. So that should be 18. And this was move object 10, which should be 20. I would hope if I could organize this properly. We so actually that looks like it all fits. <laughs> okay. We're going to say plus one per effect rank for making something ranged. Plus one effect for making it, um, giving it an area for bursts. Yeah, so that was three per. 
for that. So that's 18. Okay, so the most costly one of these is the Blast. So it's 23, 24, 25, 26 is the total cost of the fire control. So that is 26. Which brings that up to 58 in powers. And lo and behold, we end up just short of the 120. Uh, we're at 118. Um, a PL8 hero should be floating at 120. Now, I could spend this a variety of places and locations in order to balance all of this out. Um, or, we move forward with the next part of this. His GM wants uh, to have all the ability scores start at negative 1, and then one of them start at 1 instead of 0, right? Um, what this does, effectively, is it just makes your abilities cost more, right? Um, it makes the abilities more expensive, and... Uh, I usually like to treat it as an added cost to put at the end that we then have to crowbar and fit things in, right? So if it was everything starting at negative one, it would be essentially adding 16 points to the cost, right? Because uh, that would be one rank in each one to take me from negative one to zero, right? And then, uh, but because one of the abilities is not doing that, so then it's just seven of them, so it cuts it down to 14, but then one of the abilities is actually one above, so one of the abilities actually costs two less. So instead of being, um, so then instead, so we go down from the 16, then we go, we're at 14, and then from the 14, we go down to 12, because we're getting getting two points back. Does that make sense? Did I, did I lose anybody there? Like, so basically, like, we're adding a cost here to this. And we're adding 12 points to this. We're adding 12 points because we're essentially adding uh, two points for every ability stat except for one of them, right? Which is, would then add 14 to the cost. But one stat we're treating as if it started at one instead of zero. And at this point in time, we're going to do... Uh, uh, we'll say it's her presence. It's her, uh, that's, uh, like her strong aura. Since she's just so great at like being there and being a leader um so instead of adding uh, 12 to the cost instead of adding 14 we add 12 so uh instead of this costing 36 it is going to cost 48 right oh no look at that we're at 130 we're 10 points over so then the question becomes how do we get those 10 points back right and also so i know someone's going to ask about it this is a force field, which is a sustained uh, protection, and it is impervious. So let me just go back over the sustained is not a flaw, and it does not modify the cost of the eight to plus zero per rank, so it doesn't modify the cost at all. All right, so, looking at this, right, we need, why is that costing 12? That should cost 14. Seven times two is 14. There should be two more points. 16, it's 30, 34, three, yeah, that should be 60. Okay. So, no, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't balanced there. I was actually, exa I wasn't under, I was actually right on the money with the costing on that. Uh, I was right at the 120. And then this has put me 12 points over. So, now we need to compensate. How are we going to compensate? Well, with arrays. Um, so, the array represents the things that she can do with her firepower, but, like, these are things that she can only do, like, one at a time. She can't, like, modify this right now, okay? Um, and, like, she can't throw a bomb while she has a fire shape out. Now, uh, one important thing to keep in mind with the create power is that it's create and it's movable. So she can move it with uh, uh, strength ranks equal to her create. So she can move, she can move whatever shape she makes uh, with her create power. 
But if she switches over and throws a firebomb or a la launches a fire blast the next turn, the thing that she created will just dissipate because that is how arrays work. Um, you can only have one of them on at a time. As soon as you turn the, as soon as you flip the switch and turn a different one on, it, it's it's no holds barred. Like that thing is gone, right? So my plan for this is going to be to fit either the fire flight or the fire shield into uh, this fire control array, right? So that is going to decrease the cost, but it means that, like, I'm planning to do the fire flight, right? So we're just going to take the fire flight off of here, right? And so what this means is, ideally, in, in this point with her as an adult, she's growing to become so strong that she can do this independently, and she's flying just with the heat of her body, right? Um, by putting this on the fire control, that means she needs her hands. And that's the, the, the thematic thing with the fire control, is these are things that she's throwing with her hands, she's shaping with her hands, she, so that means she needs her hands to do them, right? And by putting the fire flight on the fire control array, that means that she's going to be shooting out fire from her hands in order to float, in order to fly. That means that, well, if something happens uh you know and her hands get bound or she can't use or she's using one of her other things she can't do that and fly at the same time uh, now this can be a little bit of a limitation um now alternatively right if i didn't want to do this i could literally just nerf the um nerf the flight down to uh flight one so it only costs two and she will only be able to fly for 30 feet per round. And that would actually solve everything. Perfectly. I'll leave all the rest of her stats alone. What flight did he ask for on this? He wanted... You wanted fly too, okay. So instead of messing with the arrays, we're just gonna nerf this then. All right, we're just gonna make this fly two, which is gonna cost four points, right? All right, so that is dropping 10 points off of that. So that brings that down to 50. You still have two extra points to play with here. Um, so let's play with these senses, right? The fire sense wasn't anywhere on his thing of what he wanted. Um, so we're actually going to cut that entirely, right? Brings that to 46. And we're back down having two points left to play with. Now, what am I going to put in that spot? So at this point, she can fly not very fast. Uh, flight 2 is uh, 30, 60, 120 feet per round to four, 8 miles an hour. 30... 60, 120, yeah. Um, so it's not it's not super fast. Um, but it's it's not like speedster level fast, but it's still pretty good. Um, and you got a fire shield, so she can fly. She has a shield, and she has she can create objects. She can move stuff with like fire whips. Um. Actually, she could get away with uh, making that seven. Because it's three per. Yeah, seven. Makes that 21. And we can make this create seven. Mm. 
that slightly increases the damage output there, which is always welcome, and doesn't increase the cost at all. Doesn't increase the cost at all for that. And let me see if there's anything else we can do with this. Ooh. So she's got setup, teamwork, fearless, and taunt. He wanted jack of all trades, which we can definitely tack on there. That means even if she's not skilled in something, she can try it. Um, and I always love to tack that on with improvised tools. We improvised tools means even if a check requires tools, you can still attempt it without them. Or you can like fudge your way through tools. And with improvised tools and her create power, she can actually like make jury rig things together to make tools. So that actually covers those last two points. By getting two more advantages, puts her up to six advantages. All right. So let's go back through this real quick, all right? So this is, she's not, she's average intelligence, not super intelligent. Um, average strength, not super strong, but she's also, that's average for an adult. So that means she's above average for a teenager, right? She's got a pretty well-rounded suite of ability scores. Um, again, we're pushing the uh, uh, range. She's good on her... Uh, yeah, uh, as long as her fire shield is up, she's good on that. A uh, little bit under at close range, but so she's just going to want to stay at range. Her mental stuff is... Like, her, her will leaves something to be desired there. That only hits 11. She wants to be 16. Um, so, like, it's a, like mental stats, like getting hit with poison or mind control, that, that's going to be a bit of her weakness with that. But, I mean, eh. There's not a whole lot to play with there. Um, uh, she has two power, She has two very powerful damaging powers. The damage 10 is going to be above average for her... Uh, uh, for her power level, uh, but it's only going to be plus 6 to hit. And since she makes the fire come up from the ground, um, that means uh, she can ignore some kinds of, uh, of concealment. Like if there's a wall between her and them, as long as she knows they're on the other side, she can have the fire come up and like not, it's, it just it works differently. <laughs> uh, she doesn't have to have a straight line as long as she can see where they are. Um, so she can have the fire come up from the ground to get around concealment. And, uh, actually, if I could get away with giving one more point somewhere on here. Nope, I think we're, I think we're pushing it. Uh, move, move object can't go above, uh, wait a minute, hold up, I have to double check about how high move object can go. Because, well, how high was move object on here? It was 12 on here, so yeah, all right, we're fine. Uh, the thing with move object is it can, is depending on how you use it, it can be, uh, it's not, it doesn't have the damaging rider, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, I really wish I could crowbar in one more point on this blast in order to justify getting the firebomb up to one more rank. Um, but it's still pretty good. This video has gone on pretty long. So, and I've been kind of rambling, so there's going to be a lot of editing involved with this. But this is Electra Moore. I'm going to have, see about figuring out how to have this, uh, character sheet available for download um, she is a PL8 with the modified baseline which is you know makes her ability scores just all cost more um, she's at power level for combat stuff 
She has a variety of other skills involved, including she got some acrobatics, a little bit of acrobatics and athletics. She can be intimidating. She got the range combat, fire blast. She's skilled with technology. Ooh. Actually, wait. There was one thing he wanted. Wanted her to have a cell phone because Todoroki has a cell phone. So, I just need to short one thing by one point. Uh, we are taking off the infamous setup. Alright. Which decreases advantages down to five. Because that is a very complicated thing, especially for a newer player to mess with. And... Smartphone, GPS, computer, comlink. All right, and we're making that cost one. That is just a generic feature of a smartphone. What's the powers up? The forty-seven. All right. There we go. So, I think we nailed that on the head pretty well. I hope this, uh, I hope this uh, suits what you were looking for, my friend. Uh, this has been Orion Sechi, signing off after all of this goofing around with this character. Uh, it came together pretty well. Um, you have, offensively, you have some pretty strong abilities. Uh, defensively, you're alright. You have a good balance of ability scores. You've got a cell phone, you've got a shield of fire, just make sure you turn the shield of fire on. And it's impervious, so important thing about impervious, you will ignore damage that is 4 damage or less while this shield is on. So that will be, uh, depending on how your GM rules it, that could be most handguns, and um, some martial artists punches because they're not going to do much damage. Um, you have a decent amount of flight. And yeah, don't forget about the indirect on your blast that you have it shoot up from the ground. And it's got the indirect three. You've got the burst. This is a ranged burst. So keep that in mind. You pick an area. You, you don't make an attack roll with this. You pick an area where it goes off and everyone in that area has to make a, um, a dodge save in order to try to avoid the damage. That's the other reason I hate leaving these in odd numbers. Uh, move object, where you can... Uh, move object lets you create... You're essentially using your firepower to move something as if you had strength equal to the ranks of this thing. So uh, you can use move object to pick things up and move them as if you had strength 10, um, which is pretty good. Uh, and you can create things that you can move. You can create objects, walls that people can't, like, that can cr just, uh, no one can get through. Uh, with mass ranks equal to, up to your ranks of the ability. And whatever you create will have toughness of your, the ranks of this ability. So it will have toughness 7. If some people are trying to destroy it. So you can create fire walls that can stop people from getting through them. Um, or you can like you can create stairs to climb up. Uh, you can create all kinds of things with your fire shapes. So I think I hope this gives you all of the things. I hope that this works. Uh, remember, jack of all trades lets you use uh, a little bit of everything. You can attempt things even if they're skill, even if they are uh, trained only. You can still attempt them. And improvise tools means even if they require tools, if you have anything nearby. You can improvise it as a tool. Theoretically, you use your create power to create some kind of simple tool. It's up to you and your GM. And if there is absolutely nothing you can use as a tool for a tool-only skill, you will take a penalty instead of being unable to make the check. So, yeah. Um, fearless, you're immune to fear things. Teamwork, you get a, uh, a bonus whenever you're trying to do teamwork checks. And taught, I haven't messed with in actually quite some while. So let me just double check the taunt advantage. Whee.
Yet yeah, taunt actually doesn't do anything for you because your deception is lower than your intimidation. So we're gonna cut the taunt there. That gives us one more point and we will put in its place. What, what ultimate effort did you want? You wanted... Oh, you wanted luck. I can, I, we, can, we can fit luck in there. Luck one. So you've got one reroll. Alright, so we fit luck one in there because you didn't really... Taunt let you, um, instead of using your intimidate to demoralize an enemy in combat and give them a disadvantage, uh, you would use your deception, but you have higher ranks in intimidate than you do in deception. So that actually doesn't do anything for you. All right, so that's it for this. I've been tinkering around with this so far. I could I could tinker around with this all night. Uh, I think that this came out really well, all things considered, especially for staying within the limitations and having the altered baselines. The character would have been a bit more comprehensive if we didn't have that, but this can fit what your GM was looking for, for having you uh, fighting your way through a more intense uh, thing where you're, you're actually just a prodigy character. You're good at one thing and everything else is kind of like eh, you're a teenager. So, Like, comment, subscribe for even more goodness. I hope that this hasn't droned on too far and I look forward to having even more adventures with all of you as we shoot through the stars, have wonderful adventures, live our dreams, and I keep making memes and jokes and all of these other things and having fun with mutants and masterminds. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, we'll eventually be getting back to League of Legends uh, as well, but I'm going to be doing that alongside this. This is something that I'm really having fun with and people are really enjoying, so I do intend to keep doing this. Uh, look forward to my next video tomorrow.